the Deep Seek saga didn't just end with R1. After that, there were more model releases, a cyber attacks, and even mudslinging. Let's dive in. To roughly start at the beginning of all of this, DeepSeek came out with this model called R1 that got really close, if not better, than OpenAI's O1, but they were able to do this with a lot less money. And this basically triggered like a life crisis for Silicon Valley because everyone started wondering, why are we spending so much money on training these LLMs? Anyway, after that, DeepSeek came out with a model called Janus Pro that can understand and generate images. And then the app topped the charts in the app stores. And Microsoft added DeepSeek R1 to Azure AI Foundry. But not everything has been going well for DeepSeek. People have noticed that DeepSeek, at least on the web and app versions, definitely avoids sensitive topics. And DeepSeek's website and app got attacked by cyber attacks, so they had to pause signups. And on top of that, they exposed an internal database that wasn't password protected, and that database actually had chat histories and API keys. It kind of looks like they cut some corners when building the product, and maybe didn't expect to go so viral. On to the mudslinging, there's speculation that DeepSeek distilled OpenAI's models. And what this means is you use OpenAI outputs to train DeepSeek models, and this allows you to get a better model without actually having to train that larger model that you're distilling from. On top of that, the US Navy has already banned DeepSeek, and Italy is blocking DeepSeek too. I can't keep up anymore, can you? I'm Diana and I break down tech startups and AI without the hype, follow for more.